Today, we're looking at a Purple Ink by Thornton's Violet. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. There's timestamps down below where you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Now, you can follow me on Instagram as an ink guy, and if you like fountain pen ink reviews, don't forget to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Parker Jotter with a medium nib. I used it to write for a day and to take my notes for this video. In order to standardize, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper in this first writing sample. There will be more writing samples on different papers later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in cartridge form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting, that's just sloppiness. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 20 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both shows no color variation and we're really not seeing it. Tomoe River. With no bleeding, normal Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub, maybe a tad bit darker, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 37 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we're not getting it. And Rhodia, with no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 21 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation because there is none. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And it doesn't 100% just flee from the water. It is kind of grabbing onto the filter paper as it's moving up, but we do see that this is a pure purple dye, not a mix to get there. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And we do see a faint line forming at the bottom, giving the idea that there might be a little bit of resistance to this ink. But other than that, it largely looks the same. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handled itself very well. It went from an extra fine to about a um, fine. Not much spread on that. Other, you know, I would feel safe using it in a note-taking situation if I wanted to go back and highlight. It definitely handled the uh, highlighter fluid without a problem. Now that makes sense when you look at what's going on with water, which only moves the darkest layers of that purple, but not a majority of it. It wasn't enough to really get it out of my converter either. So I had to use pen flush. Now pen flush did everything that I needed it to do. I did have to do it a little bit more than just a tiny bit. It didn't take a ton of elbow grease, but it did take pen flush and a little bit of work. Pen flush on the paper is starting to show the white of the paper coming through, starting to show that white of the paper. Now one third bleach solution completely removes it from the pen, but I didn't need to, or completely removes it from the paper, but I didn't need it to be removed. Good Lord, one third bleach solution. We're gonna try it again. Completely removes it from the paper, but I didn't need it to remove it from my pen. There we go. I test ink viscosity with a tilt test that I'll link somewhere. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Thornton's Violet has a viscosity of 2.78, making it normal. 
To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. I average those, and for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Thornton's Violet has an average dry time of 22 seconds, making it on the slower side. Instead of finding inks that look like Thornton's Violet, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice black, and I chose Colorverse Sunspot. The second writing sample is done on Twisby and Moleskin paper. Here we're looking at Twisby notebooks. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is just a tad lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. The medium is a tad darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing us no color variation and we're not getting it in the writing. And last up is Molluskine. Now there is quite a bit of bleeding. There is quite a bit of ghosting as a result of all of that bleeding. On the medium, it did touch the page underneath just a little bit, but not on the extra fine. And I don't know for either that you could use the back of the page. Now this is a medium up top. It has a ridiculous amount of feathering all over it. It has no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the medium. It has a ridiculous amount of feathering all over it. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, and five seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation, and we didn't get any, and that is all that there is for writing samples. So what do I think of Thornton's Violet? While it doesn't offer very much shading, the tone is really nice, truly pleasant on the page. And if you like using purple inks, this one's definitely worth giving a shot to a bottle. It's very inexpensive to try, and a solid performer. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? There is some tone variation depending on the pen you choose, but I preferred it from a medium flow, fine to medium nib. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm gonna remind you if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.